In this video, we're going to continue to look at what's new in VCarve Pro version 8. We're going to focus here on the changes that were made to the 2D and 2.5D machining areas of the program. We'll continue to work with set of vectors that we created in the drawing tutorial. Now we've completed our vector layout, let's come up and click on the icon to go over to the toolpaths tab. The first thing we want to do before we calculate any toolpaths is our material setup check. So if we click on the button, we can just ensure that all the values we've got are safe and appropriate for our particular setup, machine, material and tooling that we plan to use. If we're happy with that, we can hit OK. Next, let's just tile a window. So we'll hit page up on the keyboard so we can see the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right. And then the first toolpath I want to look at is the text toolpath. So if we click on the icon here, there's one new option that's been added and this is particularly useful when working with these vector textures like the one that we just created. In this case, I want to machine our texture with a V-bit cutter. So I'm going to select a 90 degree V-bit and hit OK. You'll also find that different sized ball nose tools will create quite interesting effects with these vector textures too. I'm going to set a start depth of zero I'm going to choose the option to use selected vectors as a pattern. Now I need to make sure those vectors are selected. Now I can either click and pick them from the 2D view, or what I want to do is use the vector selector option in all my toolpaths for this example, just to show you how that's been modified slightly. So for this toolpath, I'm going to click on the selector button. I'm going to choose open and closed vectors, and I'm going to select the texture layer and just associate that with the toolpath and hit close. Now with the previous version of the software, it always ramped at the start and end of each of these um, vectors as it machined them with the texture toolpath. So let's just check that box and this will emulate exactly the same behavior as we used to get before. Now if we hit calculate and we preview that, we can see what we'd get at the ends here is the tool pulling out onto the surface. Now in some cases that can be uh, very nice and advantageous and actually give us the look that we want. In this case though I'd actually like to force the tool to go all the way to the edge of each of these vectors at the depth of cut that's been specified by the toolpath. So I'm going to reset the preview there. We'll just double click to go back into the toolpath. I'm going to uncheck ramp start and end. So this is the new option is the ability to switch off the ramping. And just to show you here, we've got a max cut depth of 0.1, but we're letting the software vary that by up to 0.05 of an inch. So we're actually going to get lots of uh, varying depths of cut here, which is going to give us this really interesting randomized grain look. Now, if we calculate that, and we preview that toolpath, you can see that looks quite different because it's not now pulling out at the ends of each of these. And this works really well when you're doing a kind of a texture panel, or as we're going to do in a moment here, you do a cleanup pass around the outside of that texture region. Now looking at the preview, I think I'd like to make that just a little bit deeper. So if we double click back on it again, we could add a start depth of 0.05, calculate, reset and preview that toolpath. So that looks good. I'm happy with the way that has turned out. Now let's close that and we'll hit the shortcut key to tile the windows again. And next I want to profile around the boundary vector that we use to generate that textured area. So I'm going to click on the icon for the profile toolpath, put in a cut depth of 0.15. I'm going to select the same V-bit tool that we used before. This time I'm going to machine on the vectors and I'm going to come down and use the vector selector again and this time I'm going to change from texture to V profile and associate with toolpath. Now what you'll notice is in this version of the software it remembers the previous settings that you use for the vector selector so it's much quicker to just make simple changes to the layer that you'd like to be selected. Previously it would have reset this and you'd have had to choose all the options that you wanted for the new toolpath. So with the V profile selected, I can hit close and we'll just change the toolpath name here to V profile and hit calculate. And now if we just maximize the 3D view and preview that, we can see how nicely that's going to clean up around our textured edge there in order to give us this kind of um, grain effect in the background for our sign. So now if we close the preview toolpath form, Again, we'll hit page up to tile the windows just so you can see the selection being made in the 2D view. 
Now what I want to do is v-carve the inside of my numbers. So I'm going to click on the icon for v-carving. Start depth of zero. I'm going to select the same v-bit cutter that we've used for the other toolpaths. And I'm going to use the vector selector again. This time we just need to change that over to the v-carve text layer. And if we calculate this using the standard vcar function, I'm just going to maximize this and take a look at the toolpath. Now, as we would have got with the previous version of the software, you can see the tool will come down into essentially the widest area of each of these vectors. And that's the way the program worked, was just to plunge down into the deepest area of each of the parts that's being vcarved. However, in some cases, it could be advantageous to start in the corner and work your way down along the VCarve toolpath rather than plunging in and potentially marking the part. A lot of this will depend on your machine tooling, the material you're using, that kind of thing. So a new option that was added, if we go back to the VCarve toolpath, is to use vector start points. Now, if I check this and we hit calculate, you'll see that the entry points have moved. And in some cases now, they're on the top edge. But still, on the number one here, we can see it plunging down on this area of the job. Now, we could change that by moving the start points on the vectors that we're using for the V carving. So let's go into the 2D view. Just hit F to fit. And I'm going to select those vectors and at the moment they're grouped, I'm going to right mouse click and ungroup those objects onto the groups layer. I'm just going to undraw the vcarve toolpath for the moment, then select this vector, hit N on the keyboard, and you can see the start point of the vector, shown in green there, is in this area of the part, which is why it was plunging down there. If I would like it to plunge down from this corner into that number one, I'm going to go over that corner, right mouse click, and we're going to change that using the make start point option so it becomes the green node or the start point. For the 8, I don't really have a good point because there isn't an um, external corner on it, but I may want to just change that one there by hitting P on the keyboard. For this one, I'm going to come in and hit P on the keyboard there. Let's just zoom out and on the number 5, we'll come up and hit P on the keyboard there. So now, if we double click on that toolpath again, the vector selector is automatically picking the vectors on that layer. Remember, we ungroup them onto the same layer. We've got use vector start points check, this new option in the V carving. And now when I calculate this, if we look closely, we can see the toolpath plunging into the corner where we changed the start points to be in each of those cases. So just a little bit of a different way to control a V carving toolpath in the software now. So if we want to preview that, we can. We can slow the preview down if we want. So we can see it entering into the job there. We'll just speed that up a little bit. And so there you're seeing we're entering in from the corner, going down into the toolpath and along and around and out again, rather than plunging down into the deepest area. So just another bit more control over the V-carving toolpath if that would be advantageous to you. Let's close the preview at this point. Now let's go back to the tiled view and we're going to come to the pocket toolpath. If we click on the icon for the pocket toolpath, I'm going to enter a cut depth of 0.25 and what you'll notice here is a new option for pocketing is the ability to control the pass depths. This was something that you could previously do with the profile toolpaths but you could not do with the pocketing. So now if we want, we can hit Edit Passes. It'll show us the automatically calculated pass steps, but I have the ability to go in here and override these to make these uh, any value that I want in there to edit something. I can delete a pass depth, maybe set a last pass thickness. We'll put in 0.05 of an inch and hit Apply there. And so you can see we've got all the same control that we had in the previous version for the profiling. We've now got for the pocketing as well. So this is very, very nice additional control that you've got when doing a pocket toolpath. If I hit OK there, we want to come down to the vector selector. This time we're just going to change to the pocket vector. So you can see that rectangle that we've got in there. Calculate that. If we preview that, we can see that being machined out on the two passes that we entered there um, using the pass depth control. So we're getting close to finishing our design at this point. The last thing I want to do is to cut it out. 
So if we close this and we click on the icon for the profile toolpath, in this case I'm going to specify z equals to pick up the variable for the depth of the block. I'm going to select a quarter inch end mill. We'll just edit that so we're going to be able to cut that in four passes. I'm going to cut outside of the vector that we've got selected and as we come down the form you can see as long as we've got the show advanced toolpath options checked there's a new area here that's been added into version 8 and that's the ability to do a separate last pass. If we check that we specify an allowance value in this case I'm going to put a value of 0.05 of an inch and what that means is the software will cut out a shape which is 0.05 of an inch larger than the one we select for everything except the last pass when it will step in that distance and run a full depth cut around the outside of the job. And in some applications that's going to give you a much much cleaner edge than allowing each individual pass to cut exactly on the edge of the part. We also have the option here to reverse that last pass as well if we check the box there to reverse direction. Let's go ahead and select the vector that we want to cut in this case. So we're going to do the cutout profile associate that again and hit calculate. And we'll try and take a closer look at this in the 3D view. If we look down the z-axis and zoom in on the edge here you can see there is the difference between those passes. So the first three passes are going to machine down a little bit further away from the job then the last pass will step in, cut all the way full depth of that cut in one go and then clean up that outside edge. So you just need to make sure that that allowance is an amount of material that can easily be cleaned away by the tool in a full depth cut. If we go ahead and preview this we'll see it run around three times then step in for the last one to machine that out and if you look very closely there's a telltale lip of material on the outside there which is left as it steps in and does that last cut out pass so very nice option that's been added there to the profile toolpath in version 8. As always in the software we can double click to remove the waste material and there's our finished sign that we've created using a lot of the new functions that have been added in the 2D drawing and in the 2D and 2.5D toolpaths part of the software. One other small but handy administrative change is the ability to highlight a specific set of toolpaths to get a time estimate. If we close the preview toolpath form it's possible for me now just to switch on the visibility of the toolpaths I would like to see an estimate for and then click on the time estimate icon. Now we get a summary and a total machining time just for those that are visible. Previously we would have been shown the complete list in all situations when we looked at the summary so it was harder to see a subset like this. I can still switch on all the visibilities if I want to see everything in the list and the full time estimate for that. Let's go ahead and switch off the visibility there, close the time estimate form. Now at this stage we may want to do another incremental save so I can hit Control alt s Software will take a moment to make the save. We can see the numbers incremented up to three there. The last thing I want to show in this example is a really nice new option that's been added to allow us to generate a setup sheet for our part. To access this we go up to the toolpath drop down and choose the create job sheet option. This will prompt us to save an HTML file. I'm just going to take the default name for this and hit save. And now if we take a look at that in Windows Explorer you can see that it's generated what's basically an HTML, a web file. And if I double click on that it'll open that in my default browser and it'll show me my job, an image of the job the material setup I've used including my date and positions and then a list of my toolpaths, time estimate for them and then each individual toolpath and useful information about that particular toolpath including the type of toolpath, the tool that I specified and all the information that I really need when I get to the machine itself. Now I could save this file into the job folder, take that across with the toolpath to the machine and I've got a handy reference sheet or as long as your browser supports it you can go up and choose the option to print this out and then you'll have a hard copy of that you can use. Very very useful function to be able to access this information in a single document when you're at the machine running these toolpaths. So let's close a couple of these windows here and 
now go up to file open and I'll open one other example to show you another new feature that was added to the toolpaths that's the ability to merge them so I'm going to select this example widget merge and hit open let's go over to the toolpaths tab page up to tile the windows and if we just switch these toolpaths on I can see that I've got a set of toolpaths cutting this part we've got drilling pocketing a couple of different levels profiling the text and profile cutout and all of these have been set up to machine with the same tool. If we just maximize this and take a look at a preview we'll slow this down and we'll see that if we preview all toolpaths you can see it's going to drill all the holes for all the parts then it's going to pocket all the regions for all the parts using the next toolpath and basically it's going to work through each of these toolpaths in turn to do all the machining for them before it returns and does the last one. Now in lots of cases that can be fine but in some cases it may be that I want to actually take the parts out of the sheet as they're cut in order to allow me to start um, finishing them. So in this case I'd have to wait until I'd essentially run this last toolpath before I could do that and that's really wasted a lot of my time. We've now got an option in the software that allows us to merge these toolpaths together and choose the option to do it by part. And what that means it's going to join all the toolpaths together that use the same tool to cut the first part before it then moves on to the second one, the third one and so on and so forth. Let's have a look how that actually works in practice. If we reset the preview we close this, I'm going to switch on the visibility of all the toolpaths and click on the icon here to create a merge toolpath. So it shows me all the ones I've got selected which will be the ones that are visible in the list here so that I have a check mark next to them. I'm going to choose the shortest path option and I'm going to choose this option to merge by part. That's going to create a new toolpath for me called merge toolpath when we click on the button there. Now at the moment it's displaying all five of my original toolpaths and my new one. So I'm just going to switch off those, switch on the visibility for the new one. Now it should be obvious from this that you can see it machining that part before there's a single move to the next one and it cutting all the toolpaths for that, so on and so forth. So by the time it had cut this part out I could remove that if it was safe for me to do so while it was going ahead and cutting the next complete part. If we want to see that as a preview we can with that toolpath selected I'm going to say preview selected toolpath there we can see it's drilled the holes it's doing the pockets the profile and now I could take that out while it moves on to the next one and so essentially we've managed to merge those toolpaths together by part to give me a different kind of um, control over these toolpaths as long as they share the same tool. So jumping ahead to the end of the preview that actually concludes this video where we've looked at what's new in VCarve Pro version 8 in the 2D and 2.5D machining areas of the program. Please make sure to watch the other What's New videos so that you can see all the new features and enhancements that have been made to this version. Thanks for watching.